Some of you might remember that about a year ago, I reviewed the Huion GT220 V2 tablet. Well, today I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing the Huion GT221 Pro. The difference, of course, being that this is the 220 V2 and this is the 221 Pro. So I guess you could say that in this video, you could probably look forward to Huion having one-upped their game. You get it? Because 220, 220. It's one more than... <sighs> I don't know why you guys tolerate me. G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza, and in this unboxing slash review, I'm going to divide this video into sort of three chunks. The first is the unboxing, we can see how it's packed and what comes with the device. The second is I'm going to sit down, knuckle down and create some art with this thing for four or five hours and film throughout the process and get some b-roll. And in that process, I'll sort of go through some of the specs with you in this video. And then in the last part of the video, I'm going to talk about my experience using the tablet and hopefully if this is a device that's interesting to you, this video can be nice and informative. This video is sponsored by Huion, so if you're interested in grabbing this tablet, they have been kind enough to give you a discount, which is fantastic. 5% off of the GT221 Pro. That's how you know it, it's professional, because it's, it's got pro. I'm a professional, can you tell? It's actually really awesome of them. They've given the coupon 221 Jazza, and if you use that on Huion.com or on your appropriate country Amazon website, you can get this device for 5% off. And that is on top of standing discounts, which is, that's incredible. But discounts aside, Huion has the reputation for having the most bang for your buck when it comes to digital tablets. And that definitely was true for the 220 V2, and I'm excited to see what they have in store for us with the 221 Pro. Now remember kids, this is fragile. So be careful when you uh, open it up with your giant, very sharp sword. Try, try not to hold the blade with your hand. Oh my God. I'm an adult. This is, a, this is a really inefficient way of doing this, but at least it looks cool. And we unsheathe. Ah. Okay, so this is the, the actual box for the device, not the postage box. You get a double unboxing today, lucky you! Two boxes in one bloody day. Hueyon, thank you for choosing Hueyon. Our goal is for you to be 100% happy with your new Hueyon product. If you need any assistance, please don't hesitate to contact us. Something I really love about these guys is they're actually incredible to talk to. I, I love working with them as a sponsor, but on their socials and just in general, they make themselves really available and communicative, which I just think is fantastic and exceptional. Okay, so in this box we have, oop, with a third box with our general cables, a few screws, I suppose, for mounting. Are you kidding me? This comes with a smudge guard. That I did not expect. I have never bought a tablet device that came with a smudge guard. I've never used a two finger one as well. It feels fingery. That sounds weird, sorry. And then of course, inside the rest of the box, we have the tablet itself. Packaged all nice and snug in here. Shall we unveil it? And here we have it, the 221. Pro. It comes with the stuff you need for a stand and much like the 220, it comes with a screwdriver and literally everything you need to get set up, which I think is really cool. So we take off the static free packaging and this is what this looks like. Let's, uh, oh, look, perfect. I was looking for a cleaning cloth. So it's just got a little bit of that storage dust. So let's clean up our lovely new screen here. Oh, <laughs> I'm a bloody idiot. They've got this fantastic protective shit. I don't need to wipe anything. Wow, this is um, this is bigger than I expected. This is definitely bigger than the 220. And some of the obvious changes and additions with the 221 are the new touch strips and shortcut keys. So this is going to be fun to play around with, but we're not going to be able to play around with it until we get it set up. So I'm just going to put the screen over here and go through some of these little bits and bobs here. Now, last time it took me about 10 minutes to set up the stand. So let's see how this one goes. It's the same stand mechanism with the, uh, the plate at the back that you pull and the legs retract. So that way you can lean the screen forwards and backwards like that. So we're going to attach that, but let's first open the instructions. Where, where are they? This looks instructional. I don't want to wreck the screen, but I do have to flip it. So let's use this lovely blanket. Ugh. Step one, do this. No, nope. that, good. Step two, do these. 
think I'm done. That was two steps. I'm done. So this is the device. Then we have the pen. And this time we get a pen case, which is very cool, including the new Huion pen, which has over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, which I'm looking forward to trying out. Some spare nibs and a nib removal ring for when your nibs run down, which I've never had a problem with, to be honest. I don't even know why spare nibs are a thing. Do you guys run out of nibs? I've never replaced a nib in my life. But hey, better safe than sorry. What do we got? <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got a gift. Oh, it even says gift. It's it because I saw the the pen saw thing. But I thought because this was the pen pen. But this is something else. This is a gift. Is this another pen? Have you given me an extra pen? Cool. That's unique. A spare pen. Very interesting. Now I can actually think of uses for that because let's say you have this thing set up at your home studio and you have your home studio pen. You could also in theory have an on the go pen packed in a bag ready to take with you. And if you wanted to travel with this thing, you could fold it up, wrap it, throw it in a backpack or a suitcase. It is quite big, but it's quite light as well. And take it with you to, I don't know, if you're staying at someone else's house, I don't know. I just invented a use for my second pen because I got a free second pen, so that's cool. On the other hand, I actually have lost my stylus pens in the past, so that's probably the real reason they give you a free pen. Now the rest of this stuff is reasonably unexciting and self-explanatory. We have various cables and plugs. I'm going to set this baby up and run it off my laptop using the HDMI cable and I'm just gonna knuckle down and uh, play around with this thing after I install the drivers and we're gonna talk about my experience after that. First part of setting up is pretty self-explanatory. USB goes to USB, HDMI goes to HDMI and power goes to power. Once it's all plugged in, it's time to install the drivers. Now it does of course come with a driver disc, but my laptop doesn't even have a disc drive. What do you do when you can't use the DVD or CD provided? You snap the CD and then regret it because you were making a gag for a video and pray to the gods above that there is a downloadable driver online, which of course there is. Just go to the hueyon.com website and find the product that you have and you can just go to the product page and scroll down to the bottom. By the way, I, I noticed that there was the uh, handy Jazza coupon code there for 5% off, now only available for a limited time. I was actually genuinely really excited that they had my Jazza coupon code on display on the website. I thought that was kind of cool. Anyways. Click on the Downloads tab and you can find the driver there. Easy for you to download for Mac or PC. Download, extract, install, and you're good to go. Drivers are officially installed into your GT221 Pro. Oh, it should be mentioned by the way, another little bonus that I noticed while setting up is that there is this little hole in the back of the monitor casing, which is the perfect size for a pen. And I'm just assuming that it's a pen holder. So that's really cool. And the fact that when you set up, you can just pull the pen out, put it on your smudge guard and get to work. And when you're finished, you can just pack up your setup and pop your pen back is a really nice little touch. Now, before you jump into the art creation with the tablet, I recommend making a few personal tweaks. First of all, you want to adjust to the proper shortcuts that you want to move, particularly for the stylus and the little buttons that you can use to make it right click and middle mouse drag and all of that stuff. And then of course you have the shortcut keys and the sliders on the sides of the tablet. Beyond that, there's also the pressure sensitivity, which I also recommend experimenting with until you find something satisfactory. The default pressure sensitivity wasn't ideal for myself because I tend to be quite heavy handed and I like the lines to appear straight away when I go really soft. As you can see from the example shown here, I go through a bunch of the different pressure sensitivity settings. The top squiggly line being a very tight pressure sensitivity setting where you have to push quite hard to get a strong line all the way down to the bottom squiggly line, which really doesn't take much pressure at all to get a solid line. It turns out I like something sort of second from the bottom, a nice loose but still responsive pressure sensitivity that makes the most out of the huge levels of pressure sensitivity in the tablet and fits my style of drawing. So first things first, I cracked open my custom Photoshop brushes inside Photoshop and started playing around. And I wanted to start off simple before I dove into it, just to sort of get a grip of the device and see how it handled things. Starting off with a bit of a simple Jazza avatar variation. You may recognize him from the thumbnail. The reason I wanted to go through this method is because there are three distinct ways of working that I sort of go through. Starting off with a bit of a sketch using my 
construction pencil brush. And then I go through line work with some really smooth and crisp line weight variation, really focusing on the pressure sensitivity as a feature of this device, which really handled extremely well. Then last but not least, we get into coloring, which also works into the precision side of things and also how it works around the program as a whole, navigating between layers, working and navigating between various features in Photoshop, such as clipping masks and various selection methods. All in all, it was a really fluid experience, actually surprisingly powerful considering I was using this device running off of a laptop. It really felt like I had the power of a desktop PC with a really high-end tablet under my fingertips, which was just fantastic. Moving on, I wanted to create a really detailed and painterly style piece using my different painting brushes, which is a nice way to sort of familiarize myself with how I can go through a more elongated workflow, something that I might spend several hours working on. This would be cool because I could start off really rough and really sketchy, working very quickly, and more and more moving towards precision, finer details, and then working in features of tweaks and nips and tucks to finalize the piece. So as you watch this video, you'll see me go through creating this illustration of a lady looking at you with hungry eyes. <laughs> I don't know. I just drew the first thing that came to mind, which is a apparently a seductive woman. <laughs> Anyways, as you see me going through this painting process, I'm going to take you through some of the fine features of this device. Starting off with the resolution at a full HD 1920 by 1080p resolution. The device features anti-glare glass, which I did find quite useful in particular in this situation because I was filming in a brightly lit studio with lots of very bright lights. So while it's not a feature that usually catches my attention when I'm looking at a product, it's interesting how that came in useful and I can see how that would be useful if you have a working space with bright natural light or large windows around. The device boasts wide viewing angle, the IPS panel and uh, 178 degree wide viewing angle offer a consistent image appearance. So high definition and better color accuracy from whatever angle you're viewing at. The specifications also boast a quick response time, specifically a 14 millisecond response time, which for a digital tablet that you're drawing on is pretty nice. Now, as you can see, there are a total of 10 press keys and touch bars on both sides of the device, enabling you to create some customized, handy and quick macros and actions in your digital art workflow. Some people love these and some people prefer the keyboard on the lap. I tend to be a bit of a keyboard on the lap kind of guy. The device is compatible, of course, with Mac and PC, which is really nice to know as well. And the Ergo Pen Design features the new PE330 digital pen, which has 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity, which I definitely noticed and will go into later in this review. The device features an adjustable stand which is similar to the one on the 220v2 but to be honest on the 220 I found the stand to be a little weaker than I would like around the edges. However with this device which I'll get into later and show you what I mean the build felt much sturdier even though it had a very similar stand setup which is surprising given that the body of the device is bigger although it's actually lighter than the other device, but that's another topic. That's basically it for all of the major specifications of the device. As far as what you get in the box, you've seen all of that, but the goodies that surprised me, of course, were the nice little carrying case and extra nibs, the sexy smudge guard, which I really enjoyed using, to be honest. It's quite a silky one and has two fingers, which I got used to very quickly and was very comfortable. And I also loved the fact that they throw in a free pen, just a fantastic bonus. But I think with all the specifications rattled off, what matters most at the end of the day is the experience creating art on the device. The device was really natural to use and as you can see presents both the art and the workspace in a really effective way. It proved to be a really aesthetically powerful device and extremely practical. So now we arrive to the part of the video where I talk about how it was to use. And I'll start off with a couple of things that I feel could have definitely been improved. The first is the lack of a double click function in the, uh, the quick click button thingies. That's a bit of a bummer for me. I made a bit of a workaround by having one of these buttons be a single click or a left click. And of course the tablet itself is a left click. So by pressing that and then tapping, it sort of acts as a double click, but I feel like it adds a micro step that doesn't need to be there. So that's my feedback to Huey on. The other minor problem I found is that in the very bottom left corner, there was just a slight loss of sensitivity on the, the pen on the tablet itself. So if you have a taskbar down there hitting the little windows icon, 
icon has sometimes been a little bit hit and miss, but when you get used to that, you can sort of slow down your motion and find it when you go to hit it. But obviously that's a little bit of a shortcoming of the device. That being said, this is me trying to be as upfront and nitpicky as possible just to share how my experience has been with you uh, without anything being held back. But to be completely honest, I think when you look at the context of what this device is, a professional, extremely high pressure sensitivity device for a very reasonable price, it's hard to do better. In fact, you actually can't get a better, bigger tablet with this level of pressure sensitivity and as affordable as it is. And even more... <laughs> I just dropped my pen. Lucky I have a spare. And even more affordable with that 5% discount. I keep winking, why do I keep winking? In directly comparing it to the previous model of the tablet that I used, there are a number of significant improvements. The first that was actually quite noticeable to me is the build strength. Those of you who watched my last review may remember there was a slight wobble when I pushed on the top corners and it wasn't that noticeable in use, but it did make the device or the stand at least feel somewhat flimsy. That didn't feel present at all on this tablet, which is surprising given that it's bigger and the stand itself isn't necessarily bigger. So I don't know how the balance is working, but it feels much more stable to use and to press on. The other obvious bonus is the addition of the touch strip and the shortcut keys. Now, again, being completely upfront, I'm not a touch strip or shortcut keys kind of guy. And I did spend the first 15 minutes of calibrating and setting up the tablet to maybe find some keys that I thought could work. But I've tried to do that with every tablet I've used that has shortcut keys and always found them less convenient than just having a keyboard on my lap. But that's just my experience and I know people who do rely on those shortcut keys and the fact that they are present in this device and are not in the previous model is definitely a huge bonus for a lot of people. I guess to best summarize how I feel about a device like this, let's sort of use the analogy of a cake, right? You have the, the bulk of the cake, the, the guts of it that hold it all up and the structure and it's the cake. And then you have the garnishings, the dressings and the things that make it pretty, the, the cherry on top, so to speak. The cake in this case is the size and professionalism of the tablet, which let me just say, is delicious. I created the painting you see behind me in the space of two hours with this device. I felt in no way inhibited by its reaction time and responsiveness, the pressure sensitivity. Once I had set it up and established my workflow, there was just an unbridled flow of creativity on the device and that is what you want. Which means that this device is more than capable of producing fantastic professional results. Even better than what I can do on it. That's just the best I could do within two, two or three hours. Now all of the features that we've gone through previously in this video culminate in a device that is full HD, really robust build quality, really nice to use and with fantastic pressure sensitivity, all of which in the wonderful package of a very affordable price. That's the cake. The cake is amazing. Now what I mentioned before about the lack of the double click and the slight funniness in the bottom left corner, the very bottom left corner, not actually in where you would do any creative work. There are things where I guess in the cake analogy you could say that the icing was a little bit messy or could be a little bit neater, but the overall experience or the overall cake, I don't know why I'm so focused on cakes, I really like cake. I guess what I'm trying to say is the cake that you get in this device, they don't send you a cake. I've got to stop talking about cake! The overall experience that comes with this device is overwhelmingly positive and I can absolutely highly recommend it, both to professionals and to people who want to enter the spectrum of digital display tablets with a nice big display without breaking the bank. This is Huion's biggest display tablet product. And display tablets are a bit tricky because obviously they come in different shapes and sizes and big tablets are loved by some people. I personally love a nice big tablet but also some people can get picky and not like when they feel a bit clunky or too big and this I believe doesn't cross into that territory but will definitely satisfy people who need that larger working space like I prefer but also feel compact and slim enough that people who are used to a smaller form factor won't be overwhelmed. Some of the extra goodies that they send like the smudge guard and the extra pen are really welcome additions and add to the value of the experience and it also occurred to me that if you were to for for example, run out of charge on a pen, having a backup pen charged means you can simply swap them and keep the other one charging while you just continue to work seamlessly, even though of course you can work with the charging cable plugged in. But hey, who'd have thought you'd get sent a spare pen? 
all of a sudden even that minor inconvenience doesn't exist. And the smudge guard is really nice. I always recommend people to use a smudge guard when they use a display tablet and the fact that it comes with one again is just fantastic. All in all the experience of using the GT221 Pro today was delightful and I can definitely recommend it to you those of you who have professional needs but also people who really want to break into the digital display tablet market but don't want to feel like they're making compromise by having to purchase an expensive smaller tablet. You can get an affordable large form factor tablet that really can deliver in the long term. Anyways that brings me to the end of my unboxing and short review of the GT221 Pro. It's a fantastic device and if you're interested in it once again the coupon code and the links to getting 5% off of this device for yourself if you want to nab it are in the description. It's only available for a limited time so make sure to snap that up while you can in the next few months. Otherwise I want to thank you so much for watching and of course make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and you want to see more reviews of this sort of hardware or other kinds of arty crafty supplies make sure to leave your suggestions in the comments below and of course make sure to subscribe to Draw with Jazza for more fun with art three times a week. Thank you so much for watching ladies and gentlemen and until next time I'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell ebooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there, and you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now, and until next time, I'll see you later.